Welcome to Esports in a Nutshell Weekly, having fun with the world of esports one week at a time. I'm your host, Mark Register. We have a wonderful show for you. We have the top stories, including the events that led to the sale of Tempo Storm and Buffalo Wild Wings, the new esports battleground. We have a rapid fire list of everything in the space to keep you ahead of the curve. We have a breakdown of big questions for the week. We talk with esports performance psychologist Dan Himmelstein and Allison Kalman. And we have highlights from League of Legends Team Solo Mid vs. Counter Logic Gaming NA LCS Summer Split. And rapid fire highlights from the best matches in Hearthstone, Counter Strike, Mortal Kombat, Overwatch, and Dota. Now, for this week's top stories Tempo Storm owner Andre Yanyuk Reynad, who has since sold his team to Immortals, explains the reason why he sold was because they didn't get into E League. The reason he didn't get into E-League was because he hung up on a WME rep abruptly on their first and only Skype call. The reason? He thought WME was just another acronym in the sea of acronyms. And when Simon Abbott, uh, Abbott Bowl, formerly of GEM Agency, alongside Tobias Sherman, jumped on a Skype call with Andre, who heard bad rumors about the pair from the Hearthstone community, so he decided not to do business with them, and he abruptly ended the call. So in turn, WME decided not to do business with Tempo Storm, keeping them out of E-League, leading to the team's sale. Andre has since uh, talked to E-League's commissioner to smooth things over, but now every call with Andre ends with, No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Buffalo Wild Wings, a sponsor of E-League, shows the newly formed esports tournament across their chain of sports bar restaurants, whose tagline is Wings Beer Sports. Many patrons excited about the news come to the restaurant to watch the games. Others are not and request the games to be turned off. Managers of the restaurants are caught in the middle and find themselves in an escalating war as it triggers a chain of events starting with sports fans upending tables, breaking TVs with their beer glasses, looting the restaurant, then setting the whole thing on fire. This causes a disconnect between the store managers and corporate. A few managers go so far as to go on record saying, A bunch of goddamn nerds. Nerds! Well, let's get those nerds! 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 Luckily, there was no harm to any individuals, just property and some shaken up employees who were comforted when the unicorns put out the fires with their rainbows. And now here's the rapid fire rundown of everything that's happening in esports to give you a table of contents if you're feeling scholarly or just the cliff notes. French Cable TV Network Canal Plus sponsors Team Vitality. Evo registration for Smash 4 breaks the 2K entrance mark. Call of Duty player Alex Schmidt tiptoe commits suicide. Strategy card game Ferreira announces their monthly $3,000 prize pool tournaments. Gfinity announces their Pro Evolution Soccer Tournament Gillette Championship with a $22,000 prize pool. Gfinity announces their London Call of Duty Summer Masters event with a $20,000 prize pool. Face It announces their first Hearthstone tournament sponsored by Comcast Xfinity with a $15,000 prize pool. Chris Higgins lists out the top three smite earners tied at $305,000. MLC Stealth, Barracuda, and and Inster. Overwatch has a total of 7 million players in the first week of launch, and with it, Blizzard bans 1,500, 1500 pumpkin eater accounts based out of China. Forbes lists the top 100 sports athlete earners this year with Serena Williams in 88th at $29 million, Phil Mickelson in 8th with $53 million. Cam Newton in 7th with $53 million, Roger uh, Federer in 4th with $67 million, LeBron James in 3rd with $77 million, and Cristiano Ronaldo in 1st with $88 million. Spanish football club Valencia CF announces they will add FIFA, Hearthstone, and Rocket League players to their organization. Paul Shaloner, Red Eye, says there uh, there is a UK football team creating their own esports division as we speak. Street Fighter pro player Noel Brown gets a one-year ban for grab-assing, literally grabbing a woman's arse. 
Panda Global Gaming signs Mortal Kombat player Brad Von Scar, but says he can't do fatalities, one of the defining features of the game, but then says, no, just kidding, fatality away. Copenhagen Wolves are no more after a seven-year run due to both owners, Dig Life being tied up with ninjas in pajamas, and Jacob Blood Christensen being tied up with Astralis. Capcom reverses their decision to ban players with adult content sponsors, but restricts them from having their sponsors' logos on any official Capcom Pro Tour affiliated streams and social media. Travis Gafford puts together a I Hate Dynamic Q video montage, including Double Lift, who says he will lose 80% of his annual revenue because he's not able to stream on NA Tournament Realm when they practice. E-commerce site Flipkart announces their first India-based tournament, the Flipkart Online Gaming, including FIFA, Counter-Strike, League of Legends, and Dota running from June 3rd through July 11th with a $4,500 prize pool. Rick Fox announces he will produce a reality documentary esports series with producer Mark Koops, who, with help from Propagate and INE Entertainment. The Russian government announces esports will be added to the register of sports next week after being included back in 2001, but falling off the wagon in 2006. Hearthstone team Hearthlytics disbands after an 18-month run due to conflict between players and management over fulfilling sponsorship requirements. So come and get it. Fresh Hearthstone players for the buying. Optics Mixwell tweets out, quote, I don't get the best NA team discussion. All NA teams, including us, are far from winning major events. Who cares about online matches? End quote. Ouch. SK Telecom T1's Bang says, quote, I got sick of playing League of Legends two years ago, end quote, further solidifying the theory that you should not hate the player, rather hate the game. Chris Lombard, organizer of the Dota 2 Stars Arena and Solid Dota 2 Challenge tournaments, owes $9,000 in prize money payouts. Pro Data Gaming owner Maxim Diakonyuk says, Unfortunately, there is nothing to say. Everything is crystal clear. It's just simple fraud. End quote. Italian sports betting data solutions provider BetRadar announces gambling operator SNAI, S-N-A-I, is the first company to be authorized by Italian gambling regula- uh, regulator, ADM, to introduce real money betting on esports in the country, starting with Dota and League of Legends. Blizzard will integrate Facebook live streaming into all of their games, so you can just hit the go live button and you can shout out, we'll do it live! Also, you can log into Facebook through Blizzard games, allowing for social functionality in all of their games. These features will be implemented at the end of the month. Japan has a general election to determine the most popular Pokemon. After a half a million votes are collected, the top five Pokemon... Sylveon came in at number five, Pikachu, number four, Mew, number three, Arceus at number two, and Greninja winning the popularity contest at number one. So no, Pikachu, we don't choose you. GenVid Technologies founder Jacob Navok announces their alpha test of their broadcast technology that allows developers to place and control cameras in the game like a full live broadcast production would. For example, in NFL broadcasts, smaller games have 10 cameras, Monday night football games have 20, and the Super Bowl has over 30. In related news, NVIDIA's built-in software Ansel for Ansel Adams allows anyone with a new GTX card to have free camera motion in video games. Filters for grading, stereoscopic 360 view capture, and allows for a still image export with a resolution of a thousand times larger than a 4K image. Forgiven dropped from Origins lineup due to motivation issues. Comments on the situation saying, quote, After numerous talks we had, I thought something needed to be changed, so I made the decision to take an indefinite break from League since I was playing more Overwatch than the game I was being paid to play, end quote. Forgiven, maybe the best bet is acting school. We're asking, so what's my motivation? Is expected and encouraged. NBA 2K Road to the Finals 
culminates in HLZ Druerbachers winning the $250,000 first place prize. The event is hosted by Rick Fox, Paul George, and Kobe Bryant, or as Ben Lee would say, Kobe, my man. Kobe said on air, quote, Can I just say one thing? I'm standing here looking at sports legend Rick Fox, and if Rick Fox wants more esports, we should probably give him more esports. I'd be doing myself a disservice and every member of the NBA a disservice if I didn't invest the hell out of this. Guess what? I got a fever and the only prescription is more esports. Each week, some questions rise up around the esports industry, and each week, I like to swap them right back down to the ground where they belong. Tempo Storm owner Andre Yanyuk Reynad abruptly hangs up on WME's Simon Abitbol and Tobias Sherman, causing his team to be blacklisted from E-League, forcing the team's sale. Was WME's reaction out of line? No, not really. Andre chose to hang up on Simon and Tobias because he didn't want to do business with them after hearing rumors that put them in a negative light. When it came to launch E-League, Simon and Tobias kept Tempo Storm off the list because they had a first-hand unprofessional experience with Andre. In an industry that is fighting to instill professionalism, people who conduct themselves in unprofessional ways will be excluded. But mercy is important to avoid becoming cold-blooded lizards. So when Andre reached out to E-League Commissioner Min Si Ko and explained the situation, they made amends. And now everything is good. Buffalo Wild Wings managers and customers push back on turning E-League on in the restaurants. Should managers be forced to put on the E-League broadcast given their sponsor ties to E-League? No. B-Double Dubs is a business that wants to attract customers, not repel them away. When customers asked for it, they put it on. When customers asked them to turn it off, they turned it off. The managers want to make their customers happy so the restaurant does well. Imagine we go out with our friends to go see the new Marvel action movie. And instead, AMC did a sponsorship deal with the studio making Nicholas Sparks movies to do a double feature so we had to sit through The Notebook before we got to see Captain America. What would we do? We would leave the theater and grab beers at B-Double Dubs. Oh, but then B-Double Dubs would have that god-awful video game crud on. So we would go to the place with um, the place that you like to eat with the mozzarella sticks and all the goofy shit on the walls. Shenanigans. Street Fighter Pro player Noel Brown gets a one-year ban for grab-assing, literally grabbing a woman's arse. However, one might say it was more like a lobster nip. Does he deserve a one-year ban for what he did? Was it inappropriate? Yes. Should you be aware of where cameras are? Yes. Have we all been groped like that or much more than that on a crowded subway car? Yes. Should he be banned for one year? No. Capcom's rise to power in the esports limelight includes the heat that comes from the the rising position. Things that didn't matter or weren't seen as uh, important now are under the microscope. Capcom has to make a strong statement on this in order to set the tone and precedent of how they run their tournaments, well-organized and respectable. But just like the ruling on Team YP, they need to revisit the ruling and make a statement, not squash a player's potential earnings for a year. Instead, he should do the apology tour with Justin Trudeau. Forgiven gets dropped from Origins lineup due to his passion for Overwatch. Doublelift and others have also talked about how much they love the game in passing. Will there be an exodus of league players to Overwatch? If Blizzard builds it, they will come. By it, I mean a sustainable league that allows them to be played, uh, to be paid the same, if not more, than what they were making in the Riot League. League of Legends is leveling out at its peak popularity, and players like Double Lift and Bjergsen, who recently complained that because of Riot's dynamic queue, they're missing out on 80% of their potential income. They recognize themselves; they themselves are the product that can generate revenue. So if they move to a game that's on the rise, like Overwatch, they can migrate their existing audience, gain a new audience, and then play a game that is more enjoyable to them, all while making more money. Sounds like a win for them. 
We sit down with Dan Himmelstein and Allison Kalman, eSports performance psychologist consultants. For the full interview, there's a link in the description below. I recommend it. When we hit the topic of building confidence under pressure, they had this to say. One of the biggest things that I try and instill in the people that I work with is having them journal. Um, and you know, while we're on the topic of touchy feel, they t- tell a bunch of athletes to <laughs> write a diary every time. Um, no, but in, in all honesty, what I do is I have them write a journal, um, and that journal consists of, okay, you know, after this practice session, what went well, what didn't go as well, and what are we going to improve on for tomorrow, for next time. Um, and then I also have them write down a couple goals. Uh, so what this does is this becomes a manual of what you do very well. So if you walk into a LAN or a tournament and you say, you know, I'm just not really feeling my aim very well. It's like, okay, well, let's look back at your journal and see how this week went. It's like, look, you shot a, a 60% accuracy on Monday, 58 on Tuesday, 60 on Wednesday, 62 on Thursday. It's Friday. Why wouldn't you feel like your accuracy was on point? Look at this awesome stuff that you did this week. Um, and, you know, it's, it goes beyond that. It's like, okay, well, so what? Your aim's not great, but you're a well-rounded player, aren't you? So let's look back. What do you do very well? Oh, you communicated a 9 out of 10 every single day this week. Let's focus on that. Let's communicate a 10 out of 10 today. Um, and that really helps them not be so bogged down by, by the pressures of LAN or, or, you know, whatever that may be. Um, and I, I found that that really helps, but it's a matter of getting them into the habit of journaling. Uh, a lot of people, they'll be like, okay, that sounds great. Um, they'll do it once, maybe twice, forget about it the third day, fourth day, by the fifth day it's gone. Um, so making sure that that's part of the practice routine uh, is huge. Um, I think in terms of building confidence confidence under pressure, one of the best ways to do that is to just experience the situation and experience the situation and experience the situation. And I can keep going, and, but I'm not going to. But it's insane what just experience will do for you. I mean, when we talk about lands versus online matches, there's so much happening at a LAN that you probably didn't know about that it's probably going to be pretty easy to lose focus, to lose confidence in what's going on because it's not a familiar situation. And so I I love when the players can get any sort of experience. I mean, when we talk about building confidence to face really high ranking teams, like constantly be putting yourself in that situation, scrims, things like that. Always be playing against people that are better than yourself because not only do you get to see some really cool results, hopefully, but you're getting to learn so much more and you're getting to build upon your own skills. And that's a really good feeling, especially when you start taking down higher level teams and you then become a higher level team. Like that's where confidence is all about. It's just knowing what you're doing and truly, truly believing in it, even when the situation is unfamiliar. And now for the good stuff, the games. In League of Legends, Team Solo Mid vs. Counter Logic Gaming, NA LCS Summer Split. Game 1 in the mid lane, Huhi getting his rear flanked by Bjergsen, completing the TSM sandwich is Sven Skaren, taking out Huhi for the first kill of the game. Poor Huhi again in the mid lane gets taken out in a two on one. Hanser in the bot lane has the heat turned on him with Darshan on his tail, flashes away, but Smithy has other thoughts on that as he joins Darshan in taking down Hanser. Svenskeren and Bjergsen find a way to pay their respects by taking out X Smithy tit for tat. In the top lane, Aframu forgets about the buddy system, leaving his buddy to be drowned in the river by double lift and biofrost. Hanser gets Aframu within an inch of his life, but backs off. Exmithy and Darshan and Huhi come in as reinforcements, taking out Hanser. Biofrost runs, but he can't hide from the CLG's tidal wave, giving CLG the chance to catch up with him and take Biofrost out. Huhi gets a quick ganking from Svenskeren, Biofrost, and Double Lift in the top lane. 
Stick Say gets tethered up by Biofrost and taken out in the jungle. CLG on the Baron TSM takes a gamble in an all-out team fight. CLG disperses as TSM chases down and kills Darshan with Xmithy, trying to hurt them as they take out his teammate. He gets out of their way as their sights get set on Stick Say, who doesn't last long. And finally, TSM takes out Aframu, taking control of Game 1 to win it. Game 2, Sven Skarin applying pressure in the bot lane to Xsmithy falls back when he comes under the range of a turret and sees Aframu closing in on his left flank. Darshan and Huhi TP in to make it a 3-on-4 fight. CLG leaves with bruises and the first death of the game, their comrade Darshan. Darshan falls in the top lane in a 2-on-1 against him. Whoops. Sticks a throws out a true shot barrage, and it's going, it's going, it could go all the way to hit Hauntzer, and it does, but not for the kill, still, nice shot. Sven Skarin looking like he'll take the kill on Xsmithy, but gets double teamed when Huhi reinforces, killing Sven Skarin before Biofrost can help. In the bot lane, Aframu and Stixay on Biofrost and double lift. Biofrost on the retreat dies from Ignite. Double lift trying to take back control of the fight. Can't fight off the double team and double falls. TSM pushing on the bot lane. CLG falls back. Svenskeren and Hauntzer hit CLG's flank. But it's TSM that starts to fall with double lift and Bjergsen. They take Darshan to even the score and even more so with taking out Stixay. Then CLG gets the last kill on Hauntzer. Hanser and Svenskeren hit Darshan hard in the top lane, taking him out. They move on to Huhi, but Hanser splits off, leaving Svenskeren to his death in the jungle. Both teams meet up for an all-out confrontation in the bottom river, CLG taking a beating, losing Huhi to the war. TSM, looking beat but not dead, retreat. CLG wants more, so they take out Svenskeren and take out Double Lift, but... They lose Stixay and slowly but surely lose Bjergsen as well. In the top lane, CLG and TSM volleying back and forth in a two-on-two. Darshan gets taken out. CLG on the retreat as TSM keeps the pressure on landing the battle in the river, taking out Stixay and Xsmithy in the water. Aframu gets out to dry land and makes a run for it. Hanser runs circles around him with hitting him. But Aframu flashes and he wins the Forrest Gump Award for that run. Nice work. CLG losing their lead in game two now. In the bot lane, TSM on a warpath melts Aframu like butter into nothing. Bjergsen almost goes down but recovers. Xsmithy goes down instead. CLG with little fight left on the retreat, losing Huhi. TSM on the Baron. Darshan TPing ends Xsmithy, then the rest of the gang of CLG come in for the fight. TSM claims the Baron. Xsmithy is the first to fall. Then down goes Darshan. Sticks a goodbye. TSM loses Svenskeren and Biofrost, but TSM gets the last laugh as they take out Huhi. Aframu running for dear life almost takes out Hanser, but his big brother, Doublelift, squashes Aframu like the last CLG cockroach alive, completely taking out CLG's army, winning the battle, the game and the match against CLG. Congrats, TSM. Now, here are the highlights from Hearthstone, Counter-Strike, Mortal Kombat, Overwatch, and Dota. So, he lava shocks first. Trades and just creepy. plays yeah. healing with him. Weapon, that's it. Oh! Just oh, he's gonna say that you don't have the the Grom, but well, that's he does. He makes his best play available on the board, and he says if you have it, you have it, and he does have it uh, very much. So he didn't even need the slam. He actually just had fiery war axe for 11 damage. Don't mind the extra flare though. I mean, this is like something that this is the best chance to win. I think. Maybe. That's true, but. Maybe he's insane, insanely valuable for the face channel when you consider it seven damage. Certainly. I'm inclined to agree. Uh, I like it's the amnesia like hero power. Mm, seems Don't like he's playing. Yeah, I, I like this play. 
It's not completely uh, overextending because you still have the abusive surgeon, uh, but he makes the most out of this turn while still using the kill power. So I definitely like this. And as I said, you don't play around two AOE effects with this with this kind of board. A ton totem from that. Yeah. Actually, why you, you can you can lava shock and uh, healing wave, but your healing wave. Gives you at least seven. Okay. Yeah, it's close. I was wondering if he's planning to play Lava Shock. Did he roll this high time? on this one? No, he didn't roll high on either one. If he was able, able to, to kill use uh, the, no, he won that the, one. Okay. the healing wave. He won, which is really big. He gets back up to 20. But he will get nine this turn. And he uh, still uh, is. Wow. Flame Tongue Totem well, off that's, the top, and that's, that's exactly gonna be enough. it. Oh my goodness, what a crazy turnaround here. Uh, as much as Agnesiac looked like he was Are you gonna be playing a Nubrock till the end of the game, though, every turn? I don't know, it's man. most likely that you play a Nubrock as a trump card. <laughs> 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 wow. We'll build up a wall of Nerubians, and Amnesiac will pay for it. Two lightning storms, unfortunately for Amnesiac, he doesn't get the spell power totem, so he's not able to guarantee or have a po possibility of uh, using only one lightning storm. But he's able to push eight damage this turn, which is very relevant. And now, what is Trump going to do? Because he doesn't have sap. He will not burn Trump is just dead. He's got look at that. Bolts. Yeah. The Phalanx could have been even killed to get more damage. In. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> okay, you know what? <laughs> this, this was done because Trump is a people's champion. He he wants to he wants to make this series really entertaining. I like the the trade initially because um you you just get a very clean amount of damage and so now five damage. Oh, excuse me, six damage because of knife juggler and Trump is realizing that the wheels are coming off. You see him. Oh my goodness, the comeback is complete and Trump's dreams are crushed. And Amnesiac is the one moving on to the next round. Just don't so fire this minion, please. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> you, you made it look like it, it did, but that is going to be the end of the series. And a very fun one indeed from the crazy the free through alley. And then Pyke just running up, spots the man, assassinates Scream, shuts him down. And he's going to be looking for the second one. Pyke is unleashed. Three kills. No, he just gets the last one, but still, the damage is done. And it's all on Shoxy. 1v3 now to keep it alive here for G2, but. Pyth! Top, I get right. And well, they have a little bit of a trap here set up, and we'll see if Pyth walks into it. Oh, get right. There's the SMG kill coming. That Molotov through. gonna force him out into the open, however. But Smith goes duck hunting, picks off Freiburg midair. He should really try and save this rifle. He doesn't have armor, and it, it should be easy for Nip to win this round. So fast. They don't have any nades, though, in IP. Shoxy, at least he has the incendiary, but he's gonna spot the man, and Pyth overextends! Bit of a big mistake there. There's no kit on Shoxi, and so he really has to stick it. He needed to get that third shot, but Forrest decides to face him in. To back him up. So if Shoxi dies, there's no chance for a refrag. And look at this. Exist spots out Shoxi. Easiest shot of his life. In and, here you know, when you play at a top level. And I do like to see this from NIP. They are being thorough. There's Body going for the peak. He's going to try and bait them in here, but RPK, he gets spotted in a great blind shot coming out from Exist. Sprays down RPK. Smiths and Scream, the last two alive here for G2, but not for long. It's raining onto the site. And well, Shoxi, surprise, waiting around the corner. Get right's going to set him down along with Forrest, but Scream is there with a the Deagle, and he gets two kills now. But he's run out of time on that bomb. He's got the kit, so it'll only take him five seconds to get the defuse down, but Exist, he's gonna be playing the angles, just trying to peek to keep Shoxy from defusing it. And Exist doesn't even need to show himself. He's playing this perfectly right now. One, two, three, peek, and there it is. Just baits it out. That was a masterclass from Exist. Wins the round without even really having to confront Shoxi, and Shoxi doesn't even save the AWP at the end. He completely denied G2 information. G2 thinks that the bomb, it's on this B site. Get right, he's gonna continue he's selling that. in the finals. That, that is a tough situation, and while Python's gonna start things off strong, he has no mercy. He doesn't care about their fee fees. He's here to shut them down. Exist is there to pick up a kill as well, and it's a man advantage, and well, just a complete and utter devastating play. Trying to draw Come Exist out into the open so that he can actually find that kill, and he decides enough is enough. I'm gonna take the fight to him. Charges in, and he picks up two kills, RPK with the entry frags, but body, that's not how you treat your teammate, you don't shoot your teammate, you gotta shoot Nip. Oh, a bit of a team kill, and get right, gonna close up the round. Oh, wow, Whiffs is a full string, and goes to the Nut Puncher, and a good read that Harry Nightmare's gonna go in and chase it up, tries to jump out. Oh, and it recovers so quickly, full combo, is that even gonna be it? Oh, no, no grenades. grenades. And again, no grenades available. 
no choice but to try and get the uh, extra damage by taking him out of the corner. Oh, round That's one. Harry Knight, though, because... Oh, did spend the bar. Oh, good reversal! Oh, that's good air to air. Uses one of the clones. One reversal though and it's game over. <gasps> one reversal and it's game over. Oh, tries to backdash. Has a break available, no stamina. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, oh my God, wow. instant jump kick. Oh, a jump back dive kick, this could be it. The combo's not gonna do it, but the setup will. Here we go. Drops the combo. Oh, and he gets hit anyway. That could be everything. Irish Madness. Oh, and there we go! Harry Nightmare 3-1 versus Irish Madness, making it to Zom ground. kills Chip Jin right off the bat. No mercy for Envy. They got two big kills in this turn. Absolutely no mercy being had, but look at Tailspin making Reaper work, getting kill after kill with Reaper. The Hellfire shotgun's doing a whole lot here. And this is what happens, I guess. Here we go. Next fight about to be underway. Coco looking for a big Graviton Surge. It is on deck. Mesrar won't have his this fight in all likelihood, barring some huge damage contribution. AZK now with the Dead Eye Bully connect. Does not really connect here. And I'm not even sure the Graviton Surge is needed as they just get mopped up Tailspin. Tailspin. Tailspin about to drop the Death Blossom here in a second. Already has two kills in this fight. Will he drop it? Takes out Dummy. Looking for more. Doing a whole ton of damage. Gets the double. Looking for the triple as Tailspin. Out. Tailspin potentially about to drop the Death Blossom as the exclamation point has two kills on this fight already. Zom's running for his life. There it is, a little bit of overkill. He knew he had it. And Envious going to be your champions here today. Winning both Beautiful on just out of range. The Sphere will have to charge out, but the Flame oh. Break already skilled up to interrupt this. This might be the first blood. Oh, Who skills Flame Break at level two, says Who Sphere? Who this? I do, says MP. And now Febby getting charged along with the Sunray. This time, it may be a bridge too far. He tethers in, but 4F going to quickly lose his little buddy, though. He is very big right now. The Quill stacking up. Fear has no charge. He's running in on PPD. Oh, he might get up. a twofer here. He can hit Fear once more with the Quills. He gets him yeah, as well. This game. Owie has the level one chance. He's dead, I think. He's dead anyway. There is no saving this man. Timber's going home. So too might EG down to the lower bracket. The haste rune is up on the bat as well. Boyd's got the chrono. He catches out Dubu. It's a great one for Boba. The Febby is there, keeping Forever alive for a long time. The charge does come through, though, and Forev will fall, and now the chase is on EG, looking for more. The bat comes from the rear. He's going to drag the jump man down to the low ground. Still, it's a two for one thus far. Sumail in a lot of trouble. Has stick charges, hanging onto them patiently, oh, but Bulba's moving in. MP juking a bit up to the tree lane. Can they lock him down? There's the time walk forward. They actually lost the invoker. He rose the smokes as well, and here goes the flame rig. Just perfect. They find Sumail, but the chrono's there. It's a beauty for Bulba. Catching out three from MVP. It's up to Febby to save this. QO though has the armlet. He's tanky. They bring down PPD. Owie on the run with MP on the chase. Can they finish off this timber? They've got the magic damage to bring him down. QO oh, with the armlet. toggles. Oh no. EG. They gotta get out. They can't deal with that angry fish, man. No. Is he going uh, for PPD? No. Feeling desperate. He drops the egg outside the pit, but MVP can shrug it off, or they can just maybe kill him. QO, he chooses the aggression oh. method, but PPD does they get the egg off. Have they baited him in? He manages to toggle the armlet on again. Is he going to get it off and on once more? Yes, he does. QO, staying alive for way too long. Finally, they will connect and find the kill, but MP had another lasso. He brings down the Spirit Breaker again. Space Cow out of the fight. And QO back in the picture, hunting to the right, looking for Bulba. Peter running for his life. He'll amp chased. one but they'll chase down that Firebird. He went for the desperation play. Does match to crack the Aegis nice as a early. bold move as Owie hunts Dubu down to the river. The Chrono goes the other way. A bit of a disjointed fight from EG, but they do dump the damage onto Febby. Mech's there to keep the Io alive will eventually fall. And now PPD dropping the egg in the middle it's of the enemy squad. Fight. It's a really good fight by EG. They gotta kill this egg off. They're kinda late to do so. MP doesn't get it in time. He even gets stunned by the egg. Oh. Actually an immaculate Whoa. fight by EG, but then the crush. QO again trying to save the day. He what? gets up another arm with toggle. Again in the midst of the entire enemy squad. AG, even when it's perfect, it's shit. It's just not good enough. Uh, so damage know. on top, and they're oh, still losing these fights. They're getting grabbed. There's the lasso on to Sumail. They're going to drag him back far away from the confines and safety of his home. Down he goes. They do manage to counterplay this, though, killing off the Witch Doctor. But now 4F and MP are into the back lines. That's before Big Daddy Slardar lives, and QO's just waiting. He finds the two hero there crush. Always on target. Fear down. Owie likely to be next. Up to the high ground. Frantically back towards the well, but that's where 4F's going to hurt him. All immediately fear rejoining this one. Oh, he TP's in. He's got no charge. I think they know it too. They're going deeper for Bulba. EG, it's time to leave the game. Your run's over. They call it now. It
it's EG and it's Secret both down to the lower bracket. Well, that's it. We hope you learned and laughed a little, and we'll see you next week. See you next week. See you next week. See you next week.